Okay, so I believe everyone is seeing my slide already. Um, so I'll be sharing with you some updates in Cisco collaboration. And this is the uh, topics that I've prepared for you. So of course, I'll give you an overview of what we're doing in co with COVID-19 um, situation and uh, what's new with WebEx. Um, might give you some tips as well, how you do use the control hub. If you're using WebEx, if you are the admin, you might be familiar as well that we have an admin portal that every IT can use so that they can um, provision services, troubleshoot, analyze data, and all that. And of course, the best practices. So I would like to start with this. If you go to our website, you would see here uh, what we've been doing, not just in collaboration, but in security and networking. Um, we have different programs that we've been um, running. So, but I'll be focusing on collaboration today. And this is what we actually have right now. So one of it is one of the, the offerings that we're doing is WebEx meeting, of course, but we're also doing um, contact center um, WebEx calling, if you're familiar with cloud calling. And we also have programs for telehealth and for education sectors. Um, specific to the meeting, um, you've known that WebEx, we already have free version of it, but for, for COVID, so that we can help those that have free WebEx um, subscription, they signed up online, webex.com, uh, we have upgraded their plan from limitation of 50 to 100 participants without a uh, meeting cap. So they have unlimited meet minutes, and we also added toll dial in and all that. So till data in in um, collaboration with the distributor as well, they've been giving out uh, enterprise trials, what you see on the second. So this is what we've been giving to our customers right now, enterprise trials so that they can um, integrate it with their on-premise um, system like Microsoft O365, Exchange, Google, SSO, um, so that they can enjoy the full capability of an enterprise grade um, WebEx. And actually this is already supporting 1000. So you see on the slide still 200, but we already increased it to 1000. Um, and also for customers uh, who are already using WebEx, we also allowed them to over provision the number of licenses that they have right now. So probably you're already on the second, you're now on the second um, section or second trial. So now what is Cisco WebEx? So what you see in the screen is Cisco, is not Cisco WebEx, it's the old one. So some of, their, some of our customers are locked down in this specific version. And if you are saying this version in your WebEx, we suggest that you upgrade because this is now the new WebEx. So this is very intuitive and you can see that there's a big change in terms of user interface who made it easier for our customers to use it, to control the meetings. Later on, I'll show you uh, basics, like if you, it's for, like this is a one-on-one -on -one, uh, meeting. So I'll show you how to start meetings, join meetings, schedule meetings, and even um, log into the admin portal and start uh, navigating from there. Um, this is also WebEx. So if you look at WebEx, WebEx is no longer a meeting platform. It has evolved. It has WebEx calling, which is a version of PBX, but it's cloud-based. And the WebEx calling is already available in Philippines. We're also launching WebEx contact center. So in other regions, it's already available. In Philippines, we're also launching it um, soon. So that's WebEx contact center. And of course we have WebEx meeting and we have WebEx teams. So all of these are part of WebEx and under the WebEx umbrella. So that gives you um, single pane of glass when you do troubleshooting, when you do provisioning management, because they are under um, Cisco WebEx control hub, which is the admin portal. Similar to how Meraki um, is being managed, right? We have switches, access point, and all that. 
everything is managed in a single pane of glass, you will have that same in WebEx. So WebEx is here worldwide. You've, you've seen WebEx around the, around the globe. And if, you, if I would share the, the utilization, the number of minutes we've been having for, for months, it's very significant um, change, right? Every month prior or pre-COVID, we're averaging 7 billion, but from March, it's 14 billion minutes, and then April, 24 billion minutes. And just first week of May, we've already reached the 7 billion minutes. And for sure, it will go more than the April um, total number of minutes. And this is worldwide. So you can see that many uh, people are actually using it. And this is our new standard. We make it easy to use, easy to manage, platform advantage, secure, reliable, and scalable. And of course, in addition to the, I mentioned earlier, the platform advantage. Uh, platform advantage allows you as well that when we launch artificial intelligence ML in a specific uh, portion of WebEx, let's say WebEx meeting, you know it would be applied across the WebEx products, WebEx contact center and WebEx calling. And we have acquired recently Voicea, and we now call it WebEx Assistant, who can do the real-time transcription and translation. And even when the recording of the meeting, you would see transcription in there. It would be easier for you to search for any keywords you want to search. You don't have to pause and play for the entire video just to find where did I mention this keyword. So easy to use. This one I'll just demo later on, um, but showing you that we have scheduling uh, made easier. So we have partnership with Google, Outlook, and iCloud. If you're using any of this, of course, Exchange, we still support. Um, easy to use. You can join WebEx. You know that you can join WebEx from any video conferencing unit. So not necessarily Cisco but you can have H323 endpoints or SIP endpoints. You can join WebEx from there. Um, you can also join from your laptop and of course from your mobile. And this is an overview of the admin control hub. And this is only for admins, meaning um, not everyone can access this because you have the power here to provision the licenses um, sino yung gusto kong may meeting license, who I want to have calling license. So everything is managed here, including troubleshooting. So let's say, so ito yung mga pwede kong gawin in WebEx Control Hub. So I can do provisioning, meaning I can enable the service, disable the service, um, provision the WebEx site URL. I can administer, add users, synchronize it with my Active Directory, upload a CSV file to add users, um, can do management, compliance. If you want to set it, uh, for, for example, my retention period ka yung pinafollow sa company, um, analy analytics to see the meeting data, and of course, security can be set here. So I'll show you live this, uh, this interface, but Moving on, we also have here some resources that we can share with you. So there are times that, especially everyone's working from home, we might be experiencing some latency, especially if everyone is also in meetings, live meetings or some are streaming. So there are links we can share with you how we can help in troubleshooting latency, um, depending if you're using your business or corporate connection, or if you're just using your residential DSL or cable connection. And how can we use, um, create exceptions for IE, for proxies, and all, all of the ports, network requirements that you need to make sure that the WebEx meeting would be um, smooth as possible. And, and of course, uh, I'll just share the links, but this, ha this has you steps you can follow. And before I move to the demo, I want to share with you as well the list of our current collaboration endpoints. So I mentioned earlier that Cisco WebEx is no longer just a meeting. So it has evolved already to a platform. You have meeting, calling, and you also have WebEx devices. So these WebEx devices, URCA, 
can be deployed on premise, but could also be deployed in the cloud, WebEx cloud. So meaning you don't have to invest for a server for the entire infrastructure to make this work. You can just subscribe it to the cloud and you have to have, of course, internet and that's it. So these are all WebEx um, products. So we have endpoints or video endpoints that you can integrate with your existing TV screen or your projector. And we also have endpoints that have their built-in displays, dual display, single display, and even our new immersive WebEx panorama. You might be seeing this or not, but this is our replacement of the immersive um, telepresence that you might saw, you might saw in the office Cisco office before. Yep. And of course, in terms of the privacy and security, ever since we're committed to the privacy of your data and secure by design, and you would be able to see uh, our white paper being published everywhere. Um, you can take a look at it, look at how do we encrypt it and all that. We can share with you the links. And now I would like to proceed with my live demo. Just share my control hub. Do you have any questions so far? Any anything in the Q and A panel? I think Pacifico has question. Yep, so all of our WebEx meeting right now, even the free one, it has unlimited minutes. So that's a question to the Q&A. So the basic edition has unlimited minutes and even the free one has unlimited minutes. Let me just log into my control hub. So if you want to mean administer provision services, you go to admin.webex.com. So I'm gonna use a um, an internal demo account so we can see more uh, data. So in the overview, you would see here all of the services that I have. So I have Teams, Webex Teams. I have calling, I have meeting hybrid services and all. You would see everything is on green. If it's online, it's on green. If there's any problem, you might be seeing red. And I can also see from the overview, I mentioned earlier, we have WebEx devices that are cloud connected. And the benefit, one of the benefits that you will make it cloud connected is that it's easier for you to manage it. So like I mentioned, you will have a single pane of glass, single portal. From here, from the overview, you would see ilan yung mga devices na naka online, meaning naka inter naka connect sa internet. How many have connectivity but are having issues? Maybe may mga warnings. And how many are not connected to the internet or offline? So if, if, if I want to look at the devices that are offline, I just click on the number and it would show me sino tong WebEx device na to. Sanchan had deploy is this on the boardroom huddle room one. If you click further, you would be able to see network information, device information of this device. IP address, how is it connected? Is it connected wirelessly or wired? What's the MAC address? What's the SIP address? So you don't have to go to that specific room, find the room, and manually check this information because you will be able to see it from the admin portal. Serial number, and is it using a stable software? What specific software is it running? And you can also um, access its uh, web portal, so you can get to configure more information on this device. Now, if I wanna go back and 
look at the devices that are online, but with issues, I can just click on this again on the number. It will open up the devices and where these devices belong to. If I click on, for example, Castle Buyers, you will see here, ano yung issue niya? Okay, may ultrasound pairing pala. So by the way, yung mga WebEx devices namin, um, it has ultrasound, but it uses ultrasound for pairing. So for pairing, meaning I can wirelessly share, I don't need any HDMI VJ cable. I just have to have my application, WebEx application on my device, laptop or mobile. Then I can share whatever I want wirelessly. So to do that, we are using automatic pairing via ultrasound. So of course, since we're using ultrasound, we want to make sure that the volume is up. So para magkakitaan sila. So it would also suggest that you log into the device portal. Yung kaninang binuksan ko dito, you can directly launch the web portal here. So you can increase the ultrasound volume all in the portal. Of course, you can still manually go to the device and just click on the volume, but it's easier if you have a single portal. Imagine if you have 100 devices here. You don't want to go in and out of every room and just do that. Okay, so that's that's for the devices. And you can also set up alerts. So you can set up an alert that when a device goes offline, send me a message in WebEx Teams, proactive. So I don't have to every time go online and check if there are devices that are offline. I can make it alert to me and it will just send me a message in WebEx Teams that, hey, this device is offline. Go ahead and check this. So in your alerts. Um, and if I go back to the overview, you can also see on here, onboarding. So onboarding meaning how many users have I onboarded? So in here, I can see I have 65 total users and 100% are active. Uh, what's the use of this? So let's say nag-onboard nag ka ng 65, pero half of them is inactive. So at least you can um, re- assign it to other people that might be needing it more. So, ma-re-allocate ma ma mo yung licenses. So, mahirap, di ba? Kung wala kang analytics, how would you know that I'm using my WebEx uh, license? So, in here, you would be able to see it. Um, you also can set up your Exchange Calendar, Google, and all that in the same portal. And we even have here uh, announcements that you can click on. So if you wanna know more about um, technical resources and user training, you can click on that and it will just open up another browser. Um, and there's also quick links. You can manage subscription. Um, there is also a control hub ebook. So if you click on that, this is very useful for new um, IT admins. So if you click on that, it will open up this interactive ebook so you can just navigate here what's control hub how do you set it up there's video adoption and all that so you can click that launch that directly from the admin portal um if i go to the next tab on the users tab dito ko makita yung 65 users na na onboard so i see everyone is active I can see here their first and last name, email address being used. And if I click on any of these people, it will open up another uh, window. So I can basically enable disable service for that specific user. So if I uncheck this WebEx Enterprise Edition, this means that this user cannot host anymore. And I can reallocate this license to someone else. And you can also configure um, admin rules. So if you want this person to be read-only admin, full admin, no admin privileges, or if you want this person mag assign ka na, o ikaw nakatoka ka sa devices, ikaw nakatoka ka sa users. So you can also partial um, assign admin privileges to, to some. So hindi mo kailangan i-manage lahat as one person. So you will have here um, people na nakatutok. 
and security security if you can also wipe remote um wipe yung mga data na kunwari yung sa web exchange i lost my phone you can completely wipe yung information na nandun um and then you can also lock the devices so when i lock the devices ito yung control ng mga video endpoints kasi every video endpoint has touch panel so every user can configure the setting from the touch panel if you want it locked so that only it can make settings or changes you just click on lock so that this person um, wouldn't be able to make any changes in the devices so if you also want to add users there are many ways you can synchronize your active directory um, you can also modify and manually add user so lalagay mo lang email address and names but you can also upload a file if you have a long list but you don't want to synchronize it from your ad you can upload a csv file and just um, add it here and Places, basically, ito lang yung mga boardrooms kung saan mo nakalocate sa Manila ba to, if you want to create uh, for easier management and services. Dito muna kanina yung nakita nyo is just overview, but if you want to um, set up more details like for WebEx meeting, you want to see yung common settings niya. If I go here, I'll be able to configure yung site options, CMR, user privileges. The site information you would see, ano yung limitation ko in terms of my license. So this is the admin. Um, I'm running a client version 39.7. I'm in this cluster W. Cluster W, it determines kung saan WebEx node ka naka-assign. So it could be Singapore, it could be London, US. Um, you will also see here, ano yung participant limit mo? So if I have a meeting, am I limited to 200 or 1,000? Right now, yung mga WebEx, device, WebEx meeting namin is already 1,000. But before kasi, we have a license for 200. So if you want to validate if you have 200 license or 1,000, you go to the site overview of the WebEx meeting setting. Um, yep. And then... You can also go to your ito, devices. So on the devices tab, you will just have a single look on yung mga total devices ko na naka online, offline, and online with issues. You can manually search and you will also be able to add device here. Now, kunari, bumili ako ng WebEx board. I want to add it here. I just have to click on add device. And then, do I want to add it to a, an existing user or room? or Next ko lang siya. So let's say bagong conference room to, nalagyan ko lang ng uh, boardroom 56, for example. And then I will just have to identify, is this WebEx board an IP phone or is this WebEx board a room device? So of course, we know that WebEx board is considered a room device. And then I just have to click on next. Yep. So since I don't have a license anymore, you should see here already activation code. And I'm also a read-only read -only admin. So if you are an admin of devices, you should be having here displaying your activation code, 16-digit activation code. So I'm not allowed because I'm a read-only admin. Okay, and then going to analytics, this gives you more details in terms of the meeting analytics so if you go to the classic so you would see here yung reporting so you can see what are the meetings in progress meeting usage recording usage um so if i click on the meeting usage I just have to filter the dates. Kailan ko gusto mag-generate ng report. So if I click on display, 
okay nyo lang yung notification. So the more um, information that you will see, sometimes it adds latency kapag masyadong madami yung data. Of course, kasi nilo-load niya pa lahat. But let's say this one, um, I can see now within this time period, these are the people who hosted who hosted their own meetings. How long are the meetings? What's the start time and date? What's the username? Um, how many attended? And how long is the meeting? So if I want to click on that meeting room, I can also see this person um, or this participant's information. What browser is he using? Windows, Mac? Um, what's the IP address? And how is he joining? Is he joining from corporate network or external? Right. And now you can also use this to do troubleshooting. So for example, Yuna, um, Yuna complained that she had a bad meeting. You can get her information, meeting ID or email address. You go to troubleshooting and then you just put in here email address or meeting ID specific to that meeting. And then it will now search for meetings under Yuna. So let's say ang kinomplay niya is this meeting number 848-750-633. You just click on that. And if you click on that, you would see here yung mga nag-join. Everyone is joining from their WebEx app. You can see from the icon. Um, and these are the names of the people joining on the left side. You will see yung joining time nila. So, nakaset siya as 7, pero the rest, they joined after 7. You would also see the quality of the audio, video, and quality of sharing information. So, I'm on the audio tab. I can see everything is on green, meaning um, below threshold na nakaset. Um, red doesn't necessarily mean bad, but if it's, of course, kapag sobrang laki ng latency and packet loss, it means bad. But you would see here yung how do we measure it. So anything um, beyond 400, we make it poor quality on the packet loss. So you would see a marking of red. But anything less than 300 milliseconds latency, um, we consider it good. So, of course, you might have your own threshold of good meeting, poor meeting, um, but this is how we measure it. Um, you can see here that this particular meeting, it's actually hosted by Joanne, uh, participant lang si Yuna. And then you can also see, if I want to drill down, for example, in Isha, Isha, I see a, a red here. I can see na meron siyang 812 millisecond latency. And again, it's on red because it's above threshold of 400 milliseconds. Um, if I click on that, on her name, I can drill down further and see um, how is this person connected. Okay, naka-Ethernet siya. Naka-wired siya. Um, is he joining from Internet Explorer? What version? Um, Windows? what the client version is this person is using how is he transporting the media the audio and the video is it tcp udp um, the ip addresses and also if uh, you can see here if this person is using external camera speaker and microphone sometimes um may mga dependency din yung meeting in terms of the external um especially the webcam that you're using so, kapag hindi maganda yung webcam, it can also affect yung meeting. So, baka madi-disconnect siya or it adds up latency. Um, you can see here more details um, in the video and on the audio. Even the CPU usage. Okay. And you can also export the record. We have questions so far in the Q&A panel. Okay, so the 
for Pacifico, um, question about security, it's normally uh, the way we do it is more of how we encrypt the data. So if, for example, because uh, we have a concept of meeting ID, right? So the meeting ID it is also password protected. So of course, if you have password, if you have the link, you have the password, it means you are invited. So as long as you have that, then you can join. But in terms of the data privacy, of course, we can um, share with you the white paper and we will, um, well, Cisco is very transparent in that, that we, we share with you what we've been doing in security. So these questions, I'll answer it per question so that it would be easier for you to, um, so there's a lot here. So para mas clear kung saan yung answer ko pertaining to, okay? I'll just continue for now and I'll answer that later. Okay, and then, so we're already in troubleshooting. We can also drill down to the video. So you would see, um, si Isha nag-turn ng video. Kapag you see here a gray line, it means it's not available. So probably nag-option ng video um, multiple times during the session. And some, maybe hindi maganda yung quality on some of the um, times na nag-post siya or nag-meet siya. Okay, and you can also see details here. If you want to look at the details of all of them, so you can see joining time, duration, sino yung mga maagang umalis ma or late pumasok, um, sino yung host ng meeting, what client version are these people using, what platform, and are they using the application or they're using the web browser, um, how are they connected, Local IP, public IP, media node. So media node, this means where is my meeting being connected? So we have many data centers across the globe. And in, in Asia, we have one in, we have in Singapore, in your nearest the Philippines. So we don't have a local data center in Philippines. So we have in Singapore, um, if you're connecting from Philippines, you normally should see here, Singapore. But of course, um, hindi lang yung distance yung um, minimeasure natin dito, but yung uh, ping as well. So we ping all the data center, whatever is the optimal data center na pwede kong um, i-connect, then dun mag-coconnect yung call ko. And then system code means how did I end the call? Did I hang up? Did the call um, disconnected? And of course, yung UDP and TCP. So preferably UDP, ang, ang gagamitin natin lagi for any real-time traffic. And summary of the mic, speaker, and microphone na ginagamit ng, ng attendees. And if you go to the settings tab, so basically, um, dito mo lang, this is more of pertaining to web extremes actually. So if you look here, you can block external messaging. Kasi by default to WebEx Teams, anyone who has WebEx Teams application, um, they can collaborate. So meaning, hindi ko na kailangan i-add account, i-add user account yung specific guest. Um, it's just that you have to log in and you collaborate with me. If the customer or if your, your organization is very strict on external collaboration, you can just block it. And then you can specify domains that you want to be added para filtered, so you whitelist mo yung mga domain na pwedeng i-communicate. So for example, cisco.com, you can only communicate to field data, you can only communicate to Cisco. So that can be filtered here. Um, face recognition. So this is a feature for WebEx meeting. So if I'm in a meeting, um, you would see my name. So imagine if you are in a boardroom, may 10 people sitting, and someone starts speaking that you don't personally know, um, WebEx would recognize their face and would put a label, name label on 
in them so that you can address them by name. Um, this one is more of the reporting. If you want to enable crash reporting, tip address, ito yung for the WebEx device. And yeah, so also in WebEx Teams, so if you haven't seen WebEx Teams, it's similar to any messaging platform, but it can do more. You can also use that for soft phone capability. So meaning I can call out from the messaging platform, call a mobile number, call a landline, and I can configure from here, paano yung calling behavior? Should I use a call manager of Cisco? Should I use the cloud, uh, cloud calling of Cisco? Or, um, Cisco Jabber app, so you can configure it. So even third-party app, but what then what's gonna happen? It will just cross launch. So for example, you have Microsoft Teams. So in Microsoft Teams, we can embed on that yung WebEx Teams or Jabber. So if you click on call button of Microsoft Teams, it will just cross launch a WebEx Teams that will do the call for you. Um, and here also you can enable authentication SSO if you have that. And yeah, so the rest is more of the retention period. So by default, retention period is indefinite, but if you have um, a policy that only 90 days or something, you can customize it here. You can uh, make it three months up to 60 months, or you can do custom. So this is for the WebEx Teams data, your messages, your files shared and all that, whiteboard. Yeah, so this is all for the WebEx Control Hub. I'll share with you your um, guide so that you can also play around. And yeah, so. So yun lang from me. Uh, let me check the, the question and answer panel. There's a question. Hello, Nancy. There's a question on the chat box. Yep. I'm How ready. to transfer license to different users? So, no. what's the minimum number of license device? Like number of license of devices, only one. So every WebEx device require. Uh, not required, but you can, if you want it cloud connected, then it will require one license subscription per device. So you can start with one. Um, meron kaming mga Webex, um, kasi si Webex itself, meron siyang ways you can order it. So pwedeng naka name user. Name user is basically your use, you're buying a la carte, but you can buy it as active user. So if you buy as active, active user, meaning we will just require you to pay or to buy 15% of your total knowledge workers. If you buy at least 15%, then we give you the device licenses for free. So, at, but at minimum, yung pinaka basic, you can start with one device license. So you can purchase a room kit and just buy device license for that room kit. And then the rest you can still do on prem. Um, that's a question from Pacifico. So let me just, let me also answer directly from the chat panel. Okay, so how can I find you if the user is in idle mode or way disconnected from WebEx? So we don't track the attendees in the meeting. Um, so we can see that they're disconnected if they're already not in the panelists or in the participants um, window. But if they're not focusing, if they're on idle mode, or if they're on a way in WebEx meeting, you cannot see that. And then... Retention period of the meeting. So we have retention meeting retention period. Actually, for the meeting, 
um, hindi naman kami nag auto delete so i think the standard let me just double check the policy is yeah the default is indefinite let me just share with you the are you referring to the recording recording meeting recording So if I go to, I'll just go back to the admin. Okay, so in here, when you go back to your admin portal or WebEx Control Hub, you go to the com com common settings in WebEx meeting, you would see here you settings also for re retention. So you can configure it to be auto deleted. So again, we don't delete it um, automatically, but you can set the retention period to how many days you want it to be. So, yung mga settings na pwede mong gawin dito is, um, of course, yung language. You can also allocate yung storage, but normally they get unlimited storage. And then, for the recording cuz by yung recording ni webex by default everything that happened in the meeting will be recorded so the videos the content but kung gusto mong um, content lang yung mo record walang participant video you just click on this content only view but yung default niya is video thumbnails and you can also identify yung type of meeting so, ang default then is cloud storage or cloud recording, but some of the customers, they prefer local recording. Um, you can enable it and so that kung ako yung host, if I do the recording, it will be saved to my local PC. And you can also configure yung uh, audio dial-in numbers. So, for Philippines, we don't have it here. But for some other countries, if your participants joining from any of these countries, um, you can just add the toll dial in and they can call that for free. And yeah, so even the streaming to any streaming services like Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Fabric, you can also configure that here. So if we go to, yeah, ito yung mga streaming providers natin. You can enable this so that I can um, stream my live meeting or stream my meeting live anywhere else. So let's say you meeting uh, 1,000 na yung capacity, but I want to extend it to more audience. I can share it live to other streaming services. Yep. So you can also configure the way how the um, password is being set you can enforce a strong password so pwedeng maximum of a minimum of 12 minimum of 8 up to you um you can have a minimum of numeric on the on the password you can have a minimum of dapat may dalawa kang at least alpha alpha alphabets and special character does it have to have a special character so depends on the policy of your organization kung meron kayong sinusunod na password enforcement how secure the password should be you can do that in the um, common settings 
So what other questions? So the behavior, um, behavior of the participant, no. So again, we don't have um, that analytics na makita kung ano yung ginagawa ng participant dun sa laptop niya. Um, if you're referring to the WebEx meeting. So we don't see you, we don't track the activity of that specific individual. That's a question from Herbert. So, one question niya is, um, can we see in the report the behavior of the participant? Meaning, if he is doing something in his computer device while in a WebEx meeting, like he minimize WebEx, then respond to emails, etc. We don't. We don't have a way to um, to see that because we don't track that. Um, question two. Let me just answer verbally. Yeah, and. For Reynold, the question is, how can I find if user is in idle mode? So similar, um, we don't track the activity in a specific participant. So we don't see that in the dashboard. There's nothing that would appear. For the WebEx meeting. And can attendees record a meeting? Um, only the host can do the recording. Of course, um, limited yung controls kapag nag ka lang. So you don't have the recording. You don't have a way to, um, even the sharing, you wouldn't be able to share. Um, hindi ka rin pwedeng um, mag-add ng participants by yourself. So lahat yun is host privileges. So as an attendee, what you can only select is mute and mute your audio and video. Um, Check your settings in terms of you know, um, camera, audio, that's it. That's all you can do and just listen. Tapos, and yung again kay uh, Pacific one, no, yung about sa secured communication, depende kasi how um, your security, because it's a big and in, in uh, a broad um, conversation. So, if you're referring to someone just getting to the meeting uninvited, of course, it has to be also. Um, of course, number one, we prefer that every meeting is password protected. Because any meeting, naman, if you don't have the password and you just have the link, you can join. That is why we recommend that you put a password. Now, if you have the password and then you have the link, then mean, that means na may nagbigay talaga sa'yo and you might be invited really to that meeting. But another way, for example, um, nakareceive ako ng password, nakareceive ako ng link, but I'm not supposed to join, but I joined. Um, we also have a lobby. We can lock the room. So let's say yung meeting ko is nag-start na and then someone is attempting or kahit hindi pa nag-start. But someone is attempting to join, even if you have the password, you have the link, but the meeting room is locked. The admin or the host has to accept you first before you can join. So there are many ways you can um, prevent that from happening. Um, also, security has another conversation in terms of the encryption, um, retention, and all that. But if you're referring to just joining uninvited people, Uninvited people joining the meeting, then there are ways you can prevent that, like enforcing password and locking the room. Uh, meron pa bang hindi na answer? So retention is answered verbally as well. Okay, I think wala na sa Q&A, but if anyone wants to... Uh, if anyone wants to raise a question live, right, raise your hand so or you can so that we can unmute you. The host can unmute you and you can raise the question.
there any more questions? Any question, Alana? I shared in the chat panel yung link for your reference in terms of the web security and privacy. Um, you can get more details from that link. I panelists. So you by the way, you meeting, um, what we're using right now is WebEx event. So before we siguro end, what would like to share that WebEx meeting is different from WebEx events. So WebEx meeting is how you usually meet people, do the usual meetings. Um, you have only attendee and the host. Um, when you launch WebEx events, magkakaroon ka ng host, panelists, and attendees. Now yung attendees. Kung nakikita niyo right now, hindi niyo nakikita yung other attendees. The host or the moderator can choose to uh, make that visible or not. So you should only be seeing the names of panelists, the name of the host, and that's it. And also our videos. So in the events, for example, um, gusto namin i-promote ka as a panelist from the attendee, we can do that during the event. Um, in terms of meeting, since wala tayong concept of panelists in the meeting, uh, meron lang tayong host and participant, we can still make you the host if you are just a participant. So we can switch, you, we can pass privileges even during the meeting. So you can be presenter, you can be the host, um, and we can also expel, we can also add users. So those things we can do during the meeting. That's a question from Mayla from the chat panel. So, meron atang ano, mag mag question, Jeff and Reynold online. We unmute. Anyone? Yes. Pwede mo, may tatlong nag-raise or apat na nag-raise ng question. Can we end with one at a time? Baka gusto mag-raise online. Si Reno, Jeff, Boots, and Mila. Reno. Ayan. So, Sir Reno, naka- Unmute ka na po. Nagtitest ba siya? Sino dito yung nag-webex meetings na? Can anyone raise their hand or? Nice to see everyone. 
click on yes icon or no icon. Or can we do posing? Okay, I think wala na more questions is a reno. Uh, maybe Jeff Boots or Jeff, sorry, Jeff, sorry, Jeff Agaba. Okay, you're on mute now, sir. Thank you, Jeff. Wala na questions po. Mukhang wala. Then for, may raise a question in terms of the number of participants who can join events. So maximum is 3,000. Um, but if there is a need for more, we partner with Vibrick and other streaming services na wala namang limit so you can just subscribe to the number of um, people viewing the view so normally naman those will be one way lang but yung 3000 kasi na to from webex events is interactive so we can do mute and with everyone the, the rest kasi that can do more it's normally one way uh here one way audio lang so someone's asking about the recorded webinar. Not sure if, Jung, are you gonna share it with them? Yes, we'll share the slides. The, the recording though. Uh, the recording also. Okay. So for Lars, the question is, um, before I purchase license, so basically it's under subscription ID. Now we purchase another license, another subscription ID. Um, yung every from what I know, um, Larisi, every order will translate to a specific sub ID, but it doesn't mean it's separate organization. So pwede kasi in one org, marami akong sub ID. Kasi yung sub ID it means ito yung in order ko for the subscription. Let's say devices. But we can share with us siguro yung sub-ID na ginawa to make sure it's linked together. So para pag nagpunta ka sa admin control hub, everything na na-purchase mo can be viewed in a single um, admin portal. So siguro uh, pa-share na lang po ng subscription IDs and then we'll see kung kailangan pa i-consolidate. Pa-assist na lang doon, um, Jang, from... Hi, uh, yes. Hi, Sir Lan. Hi, Sir Lan. Larcy. Sir Lan. Uh -huh. Larcy. Yes. Uh, uh, we're actually. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes, we will will uh, talk to Sir Larcy na lang off time. Uh, I we currently uh, have. Also, uh, he also has a question on the room kit plus. So maybe nili na sila, and then they want to test ata yung cloud license. So, yung room kit plus yes. naman po kasi, it will work on-prem, so we, it can even work standalone. But we recommend that you do SIP registration, either cloud or on-prem. But of course, madami din benefits yung cloud. Like I mentioned kanina, you can monitor the status of the device online from the same admin portal. You can, um, so imagine kasi sa ngayon okay pa kahit kasi isa pa lang. So, kung isa pa lang siya, and but imagine if you have multiple floors and multiple meeting rooms per floor, 
multiple devices total. So it's very hard to manage. So if you have everything cloud connected, it would be easier to manage. And syempre, malilimit din natin yung mga reklamo na hindi ko magana kasi hindi pala naka-connect naka sa internet or um, naka-load pa pala is sobrang lumang um, version. And in addition to that, the devices have being cloud connected is that um, kung kailangan mong um, mag-push ng software update, it would be hindi na siya isa-isa. So, ano siya? Uh, mas mabilis. Mga security patches. And also, one thing I didn't show earlier, dun sa admin control hub, may kita mo din dito yung devices. So, if you look at kanina kasi analytics lang ng meeting, but if you go to the devices tab, it will just take a while to load. Um, you would see here utilization ng devices. Ibig sabihin, may kita mo, um, ginagamit ba talaga tong room kit plus dito sa room 101? May kita mo ano yung usual na device activity. So you would see here that um, during this time, ito yung mga activity. So 100% nakakol yung Webex device. So, meaning, perfect yung nilagyan mo ng device kasi nagagamit siya. But if you see here na um, sobrang konti lang yung gumagamit, maybe it's better na i-reallocate mo yung Webex room kit sa other room, i-repurpose mo. Baka kasi hindi, hindi siya masyadong napupuntahan ng mga tao. Um, you can see also here, usage hours and yeah, device utilization. So you can see here as well, weekly and monthly utilization. So we will also have here, kung yung device ginagamit lang as local uh, local presentation. So minsan kasi yung mga conference room, kahit na may mga devices like video endpoint, ginagamit lang to project offline or local presentation. You'll be, you'll be able to see that as well here on the device activity. But for this specific device, it's every time um, being used so, as a video call to call someone, then may kita mo dito, it's in call. But if it's being used for offline sharing, may kita mo din dito under device activity. So, ayan. So, you can play around the WebEx Control Hub. Masyadong marami siyang details na pwede mo talagang magamit in terms of managing, provisioning, troubleshooting yung entire WebEx um, platform mo. Not just the meeting, but also the devices. And for this one, vendor linking penetration testing so, question from Larcy, um, where can I get a correct bomb? We can help on that, ma'am, uh, sir, get you the bomb. I can also do the bomb and I'll share with you data. How many po ba? You can, we can work on it offline na lang siguro. Um, fill data, uh, John will assist you naman on getting uh, Yes, siguro yes. We'll get in touch with her, guys. Yes. And if anyone from you kailangan ng um, maybe deeper dive or further question that you forgot to raise, you can email or you can send in WebEx Teams. If you have WebEx Teams, we're also there. You can ping us. Um, yep. So that's it for me, I think, if there's no other question. Now, I also want to hear from you your thoughts on Okay. Thank you so much, Nancy. Thank you so much for the WebEx um, tip, tips and tricks. So, uh, sorry, I'll turn I forgot one. Oh. The tips and tricks pala. Yung kanina. Let me... Ito. Very quickly, um, I'll also share the link. So basically, I recommend everyone, even if you're the host or participant when joining meetings, you use the application. Kasi it uh, limits. It's also um, faster compared to you joining from WebRTC or a browser. Um, we also suggest that you run speed test to make sure that you have a good quality of internet. Even if we are at home um, and we have a big internet pipe, 
but it doesn't mean na maganda na yung quality because everyone's using the internet and it's shared. So maybe you can do run speed test and make sure that you have a healthy connectivity. Um, you might also be checking, wanting to check your background application. Kung may mga nag scan ng virus, streaming ng videos, because they consume high CPU resources, and that could impact as well the quality of the meeting. And if you really have a, a not so good quality of internet, then we can just turn off video and just allow audio to be um, the media. And if you also have VPN, if you do not, if you do not have a setting of split paneling. Uh, we suggest na it turn off my VPN so that the WebEx meeting can directly connect to internet and connect to the most optimal data center. Ayun. And also, especially kapag yung VPN, uh, may mga proxy pa siyang dadaanan, so it adds latency. And especially if yung VPN you're connecting somewhere else na malayo sa Asia, for example, you're connecting to VPN of US, and then mag pa yung traffic from Philippines to US instead of you just routing to Singapore data center. So maraming mga possible scenarios. So these are just the basic guidelines. And of course, if possible na mag-wired connection ka instead of Wi-Fi para mas stable. And of course, um, reduce mo yung movement distractions. So consider muting yourself if you are not talking. So kasi minsan di ka papansin, maingin yung background natin. Just mute it, and then you can just unmute if you want to talk. So that's for the WebEx meeting. I think I did not share the screen, but I'll share this, this one. Um, I just said this. I'll send the link in chat panel. So this is basically what I just said. I forgot to share earlier. So yun, so I'll share it in the chat panel. So I'm done, Jan. 